Howdy folks, welcome to Dig Drive DIY. My name is Neil, and today I've got a bit of a DIY project. I'm going to attempt to repair this pesky, long time, slow leaking tractor tire with an inner tube, and I hope to do it all with hand tools. So let's get to it. Hey, what are you doing or what am I doing here? Oh, I'm from later on in this video, and I just wanted to jump in the beginning here to let viewers know that we'll be fixing two tires in this video, but this is the only tire that's leaking, so I don't know well, what else we'll find out soon fix. enough. Just carry on like I wasn't here and fix this tire that's been flat every time we want to use this tractor <laughs> for like the last six months now, and just know we'll have another one to do very okay. soon. Well, I don't know about all that, but oh, and we won't be using hand tools on the second one, so viewers can look forward to a more mechanical approach to installing a tube. So we're gonna have to use a tire machine? Maybe, I don't wanna spoil it, just do your repair like I wasn't here. We want the video to look natural. Okay, well, let's get to fixing this tire with an inner tube and we'll, hey, where did that come from? Coat, dig, drive, DIY. All right, I've gathered up all the right stuff here. I've got my impact and a 5.8 socket is what's needed on the front of these John Deere compact tractors. Fortunately, a tractor with a loader is really easy to jack up the front end. But uh, the one thing I don't understand is why I'm so willing to put up with a flat tire. This thing has been leaking for a good long while now, and I just keep putting air in it every time I need it. It's flat every day. For me, it's easier to add an extra five minutes to every time I want to use the tractor than it is to sometimes string together an hour and five minutes to fix the tire. And over the course of six months, that's been the case. So let me know if you begrudgingly put up with something like this and uh, make me feel like I'm not the only procrastinator in the world, so. Anyway, I better get back to fixing this. Okay, obviously our first step was removing the tire. Step number two is to break the bead. I like to start off by removing the valve core from the valve stem. All right, now we can try to break the bead. Now, if you're lucky, you could just break the bead by hand by stepping on it. Looks like we're not gonna be so lucky. Okay, my second approach will be to try a pry bar. I don't think the pry bar is gonna work. Hmm. All right, well sometimes you can get lucky and they will pop right off with a bar. Sometimes you can hit them with a hammer. They make Nice big slide hammers that you can use to break the bead. And obviously they have a tire changing tool that you can use to break the bead. And this one appears to be pretty tight. So we do have other methods at our disposal though, especially since we have the loader tractor. Well, sometimes you just gotta get creative when it comes to breaking the bead. That would've been a hard fought battle uh, by hand. Fortunately, we had the forks on the loader to do that. And if you don't have forks, you can use a slide hammer, you can use something to drive over the edge of the tire. Basically, you saw what kind of force it takes to break the bead off of there. You may have to employ whatever technique you can come up with to break that bead, so. Step number three is to get the bead up over the edge of the rim in order to get the tube in underneath it. Um, you saw me lay down the carpet earlier, and that's why, because this is so much easier on the ground where you can get on your knees and get some leverage. These are actual tire irons. They're made specifically to change tires. I bought them when I was like 18 or 19 years old and riding dirt bikes all the time. They're, they're flexible, they're different than just screwdrivers. They're just, they're better. You should invest in these if you don't have any, if you have ambitions of doing your own tire repair. Okay, the name of the game here is patience. Um, you wanna take small bites when you're trying to get this bead off the rim. I start out 
trying to hook the bead and getting it over the edge. And you're gonna push on the opposite side. You wanna push this part of the tire up underneath the bead like this to move the tire over in that direction. And then you're gonna pry that up and over like that. Okay, now I'm gonna take a short bite and go over here with my next tire iron. And these are nice because they've got a little, see that little hook? That's nice for hooking on the edge of the bead. So I'm gonna, I'm gonna relax this one a little bit, let it slide back, move over about six inches. That first one's pretty easy. Then I hold both with one hand, move over another four inches maybe. Gotta get it down in there. And here's where it starts to get a little tight. So now I got three and I can remove my middle one. Take another small bite. I want to keep pressure on this with my knee on this back side. And then gradually, you got to work to get up underneath that lip of that tire. And I'm taking just a little bit. There it can, it's starting to go. And this one's came loose now. There you go. Now it's going to go pretty easy. That first part can be tough and it's even harder to get it back on there. So now I can just work my way around the tire without risk of it falling back down. The straight side, when you're just trying to, to work the edge of the rubber around the rim, and you don't need the hook. The other side of the bead is still set to the tire. It hasn't been broken, so I don't have much flexibility here like I should. Okay, I should mention, I have tried to fix this tire before. It's had a leak, and uh, I even had a buddy of mine try to fix it. And so after two or three times of trying to fix it, trying to clean up the rim, I'm over that. Whenever you put a tube in, you're obviously gonna cut off the valve stem. If there wasn't a tube in it before and it still has a valve stem, you're gonna have to cut that off. And I'm gonna try to get in there and hold the back. You wanna grab the piece in the back too. Got this from Tractor Supply. It's a 23 by eight and a half or nine and a half or 10 and a half by 12 inch rim. This tire here is a 23 by eight and a half by 12, so. So without the other side of the bead broken, I don't have much room to pull this up and I don't, I think it's gonna be too tight. So I'm gonna have to break, break the bead off this side in order to be able to work on this correctly. All right, so I start with the valve stem hole right here. And uh, since now, see how that bottom bead is broke? I got plenty of room to get in there. And that's what I should have done from the beginning. It's not very stretchy. I try to start by the valve stem. I like to put a pair of little vice grips on there to hold it in place so it won't fall off while I'm fighting the rest of it. This thing is one of the tightest ones I've ever tried to put on. I don't know why it is so tight. Okay. Wow, I've never had a tube be this tough. All right, I almost got it. Here's another reason why these spoons are so much better. They, have, they don't have really sharp edges. And when forced to do this with an inner tube, you take a big risk of pinching the tube against the rim. And whenever you pinch the tube, you make a hole. And I learned that the hard way when I was doing dirt bike tires all the time. But there, I had to work the tube around there, much like you'd have to work the tire around. And it's finally around the rim there. Can you see where the tube is tight against the rim right here? If I would put the tire on right now, that would pinch the tube between the rim and the tire and that'd be game over. So you gotta push this, push this tube back in there. There we go. This side looks good. There's nothing between the, the tire and the rim. The tube is well down below there. So I can set this down on this side, on the back side and know that it's okay. But this one, we still need to get the tire on the underside of the rim or underside of the bead. And I'm gonna run my finger along the whole top edge. I made sure that the tube was not up against the bottom lip of the bead. 
So I like to put a little WD-40 on there. Smear that around a little bit. Okay, same thing. I'm going to start in one spot. I usually start on the opposite side so that I can push with my knees against this side of the tire. I'm going to start by taking it over there. Now I'm holding this one in place so that the tire doesn't pop up off the top of the rim again. Holding that with my leg, changing tire irons. Need four arms for this job. Okay, here's where you want to make sure that you got plenty of slack on this side. See? It allows it to go underneath the bead and give you more slack to get the tire on the rim. Don't try to take too big of a bite. If that inner tube isn't far enough down, you'll stick the tire irons in there and you can pinch the tube that way too. So you really want to make sure that that inner tube is down inside the tire and it's away from where you're working on the bead or you run the, a real strong risk of pinching it with those tire irons like this. All right, hopefully I didn't poke any holes in it in that whole process. Okay, the air is escaping. It sounds like it's leaking at first because it's all the air inside the tire being pushed out. Make sure your valve core is kind of straight. You can manipulate it around. I don't hear any air leaking, so I think I'm good. I'm gonna pump her up. 75, 80. Okay, there's 80 pounds. I'm kidding. Don't ever put that much air in them. That's about 20 pounds. And I overinflate them a little bit because they're on the loader tractor, but I think it's gonna hold air. I've got a perfect test, some heavy usage for this to see if that inner tube's gonna hold up. So let's go test it out and see how it does. Well, as you can see from that, I had a pretty hard day of working the tractor, plus that's a little sneak peek into a future video, but that inner tube held up fine to haul in all those logs. I didn't have any trouble. Matter of fact, I got all done, finally brought the tractor back home. It sat in the shop overnight and I came back out the next day only to find this. So yes, now after putting a tube in the other side, this side is now flat and we checked it out and it's leaking from the sidewall again, just like the other one. The, the weather checking in the tire has made it fail now. So it needs a tube. I just wish I could have told myself in the beginning of this video that uh, I was gonna have a second tire to fix and I could have wrapped it all together, but I'm gonna go grab another tube and then hopefully I'll get this one doctored up. And then I'll wrap up the video when both sides are full of air. <laughs> okay. Well, I quickly thought I was gonna put a tube in this tire just like I did the last one, break the bead with the forks of the tractor, and guess what? I can't get the bead broke with the tractor forks. So I'm gonna run this over to my parents' house where I have a tire changer in my dad's shop. And I'm gonna fix one with a tire changer just to show you how that goes too. It's like a hybrid tire changer. It's got a pneumatic cylinder that breaks the bead. Then you manually gotta change the tire. Got two little cogs that hold the wheel down in place so you can have it locked in a position on the tire changer while you take the tire off the rim. Push on the back side still. I'm going to start again by putting the uh, tube in so that the valve stem comes through the hole first and then I'll work the tube the rest of the way around. Since I just got some practice with this, maybe it won't go so bad. So 
And that tube went right on there and I'm pushing it down below the, the bead just like I did before. I start it on the side. Bead's gonna pop on there. That, that wasn't bad. How many tires do you think this thing has changed? I'd hate to guess. I bought that thing out of the Peddler's Post, which was an old classified paper. I was just out of high school probably, 20 years ago, 25 years ago. When you first got the Scouts. Yeah, when I had Scouts. So. That thing has paid for itself. I paid 75 bucks for it. We mounted it up on Dad's shop floor. It's never made it to my shop. Well, that was easier, and luckily it was just across the field, so. Well, there you have it. The tire changer was a little bit easier to use, and uh, admittedly, I gave up a little bit sooner trying to break the bead with the forks this time, just because I had already done it manually once, and well, you got to see it done both ways, an inner tube installed in the tire both ways. I've got two new inner tubes in two very old weather check tires, but they should last me a good while longer yet, so I'm happy. I won't have to pump up the tires every time I come out to use the tractor, which is the right thing I should have done a long time ago. But I thank you so much for being here. Hopefully you found the video useful, and if not, maybe at least entertaining. So we'll see you in the next one. Take care. Coat, dig, drive, DIY.